Hi, I'm Todd Liebeck. I'm an independent Android app developer, and this video is a plea to Google and the Android developers to fix a security vulnerability that affects all versions of Android, including their latest um, Android in developer preview. That'll be eventually what succeeds Android Marshmallow. Uh, Google's aware of this problem. They are taking efforts to fix it already in Android in, and uh, those very efforts are what brought the problem to my attention in the first place, because while they don't actually correct the security problem itself, they do break many applications, uh, and those applications include my own system panel app, which won't work at all anymore. Uh, also, apps that are affected are things like security and antivirus tools, uh, the very things that will, will otherwise keep you safe from this. Uh, their solution doesn't work. Uh, in Android N, I'll demonstrate in just a moment here, this malware type attack is still, a is still entirely possible. And, uh, but the good news is there's a pretty straightforward solution to it and that will actually correct it and, and mitigate any possibility of anyone ever exploiting this type of attack. Uh, so what I want to do is demonstrate some fake malware here uh, that will show off the problem and then show you how it can be actually corrected uh, without any side effects. So to demonstrate this problem, we're going to do some online banking. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download a banking app from the Play Store. Uh, I've chosen Chase Bank. Uh, this is nothing particular to Chase Bank, but uh, they're just being used as a demo. Again, any bank or anything with a login and password like Facebook or Twitter or any Android app could be the target of this type of attack. So I'll download and install the Chase Bank app here. And we'll open this up. And this is fresh from the Play Store, the Chase Bank app. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and accept their license agreement. And now here we are in the Chase Bank app. And as you can see, here's the, um, the Chase logo of the Chase of this app on uh, the usual uh, user ID and uh, password uh, entry area. So I'll go ahead and type in my account info and password and log in with my account balance and oh it, it looks like something bad is happening I, my money's all gone and um, I've been approved for a boat loan so obviously this is not the real Chase Bank app uh, but you did see me download this from the Play Store and I opened it up and all of a sudden I was presented with this alternative application uh, you'll notice there was no transition to the alternative application uh, th this screen here showing that, you know, my obviously very fake Microsoft Paint drawn Chase logo and phony login. Um, but uh, in the case of a real mal malware app, you wouldn't see any of that fake stuff. They would simply use the assets from the real Chase Bank app and you would never know this happened to you. You would enter in your login and password and then it would send it off to a malicious developer who would use it against you and maybe set you up with a nice boat loan. And I want to note, this is running on Android N. Uh, if I uh, scroll down here and go to the about this device, we see uh, Android version N. Uh, this is the latest developer preview. This is a Google Pixel C tablet. Uh, it's their latest product. And this attack is still very effective. Now, what Google is doing to prevent this attack from happening is they've disabled the ability for an application to figure out what other applications on the device are running. And that's where my own app system panel comes in, in that system panel here um, can no longer see any other running applications. This is supposed to be a big list of running applications on this device, and the only app system panel can see is itself. So what Google is thinking is that, hey, if we get rid of the ability for an application to see what else is running, perhaps we can... Uh, avoid a malware product like this from being able to figure out when to start itself to impersonate some, you know, the, a legitimate app like a banking app or Facebook or whatever. Well, as you can see here, this is Android N and we, uh, our, our malware test worked just fine. So that does not work. Um, the problem is, is there are numerous other ways uh, to figure out what's running on the device. In my case, I waited for a network connection to be opened to uh, Chase Bank's subnet uh, specifically targeting the, the, the Chase Bank in this uh, particular malware demo. 
Another method uh, would be to monitor that, that uh, application's file structure and wait for it to go ahead and create a cache directory or something in, in, its, in its public uh, storage area and then uh, fire off the malware at that point. And those are just two ways that it can be done. Uh, there, you know, I mean, leave it to malware authors to find out many, many more. The point being is that uh, simply limiting legitimate applications from figuring out what's running, like System Panel can do here, uh, and put it to good use to show you things like what's going on in the background. Do I have any of these applications in the background that are running? Um, you know, what instead of blocking that. There, there's another way to solve this, um, and um, that is to actually attack the way the app, th this type of malware, will launch. Um, the problem is, is that when I open, uh, or when, when I open that Chase Bank app, you know, a another application can simply launch directly on top of it without my asking. I mean, normally I'm going to click on applications here in the launcher to open them, but Android doesn't necessarily work like that right now. Any application can open itself whenever it wants to. Uh, this isn't good, and this permits malware developers to do very, very bad things. So my recommendation to Google is get rid of that. Uh, there's no reason for that. You know, If you're launching something from a notification or whatever, that's fine. But if you're just going to arbitrarily launch, um, you know, an application should not have a right to do that, to just bring something to the foreground directly over what you were using without any warning whatsoever. It's a trivial change to make, and it corrects this problem quite nicely. And no matter what a malware author does at that point, no matter what exploits they find to figure out what's running in the background, the problem is solved.